Oscar. You're supposed to be efficient. What's up everybody and welcome. We're actually uh, just getting to the shop here. It's bright and early. I don't even know what we're going to do today. So uh, let me get inside and uh, we'll find out. Well, we got our first task for today. We're on a 456 here. The first thing we're gonna do, if we can do it real quick, if this is the problem anyway, is our far starboard engine here is overheating at idle, which leads me to believe it's thermostat. So let's trim these down and uh, I'll pull the cover off and we'll get to the thermostats and see if one of them's stuck open. All right, luckily, thermostats are right on top here. We can just get right to them, trimmed it up so we don't drop anything in the water. At least we're over enough here. You can hear the hum of the uh, throttle body here. So let me pull this off. I need both my hands here and we'll see what's happening underneath. Well, look at that. Stuck open. That causes uh, the water to flow too fast through here and then you get overheating basically on the top of the engine because it's all aeration. So we're gonna change both sides. We'll do the other side also just two 10 millimeter bolts takes this off here all right so here is the far starboard side here so here's our problem the whole time you could actually run the motor up past idle and it'll be fine because you get enough water flow at that point but that will definitely cause a idling overheat right here so we got two new ones let me slap them in and we'll see if uh see if she'll pump water at idle all right we got our new thermostats in here let's trim this thing down and see what you do here we go, ignition. Let's just start them all just because we'll check all the water flows. All right, well here's our motor that is now peeing. That's good. Let's check the other three here. They are good. Good. And good. All right, looking at our gauge here. Looks like we're perfect across the board here. No problems with temperature. Well, right. Luckily, that was a simple fix. We don't have to yank the boat out of the water or anything to uh, look at the gear case or anything. So now we actually uh, have to hit the road. Not sure where we're going to end up, so let's just cut the camera to where we end up. Surprise! That's no, just me. But look in the background there. That's actually uh, Hulk Hogan's old house, the one that they filmed with the uh, MTV show they had years ago, whatever. Yeah, so if you walk here by his house, there's a private entrance right here. I don't have the code for it, but I'm gonna call the customer here so we can get in. We're going to look at a 330 Grady White. I guess it's not peeing. He's gonna take it to the shop for service anyways. And uh, we're just gonna make sure it's gonna make it there. It's not a very far trip. The bridge is basically right over here. We'll see it when we get out there, so I'll meet you out there. Yeah, we're out at our little marina here. And there's our bridge right there to make it back to our island. It's basically over there, but we have Another Grady White. I think behind it here we have one of our Tierras. It's one of our customers peeking over here. Yep, yeah, there she is. And our boat's right here. We just started putting it down. So let's get on it and fire it up. All right, so we got our batteries on. We're plenty low enough in the water. Let's fire them up and see what happens. I doubt we have a water pump problem. There's probably just crap stuck in them because this boat's been sitting around. So let's fire them both. Make sure we don't have an overheat. Yeah, there's nothing coming out of either one of our motors here. Let's rev them up. Sometimes that'll draw the water and push out whatever. All right, so neither one of them are still pumping here. Good thing this boat's going into the shop because uh, they can clear out that water tube. I'm not gonna do it over the water. You literally gotta pull this cowling off and then take it all apart or stick some crap down the tube, but let's make sure it's got water pressure I switched the gauge here we can check if she climbs while we're revving it up here see our little red marker here I switch it so we can see it yeah they're both climbing good we got no issue with water pump or anything or overheating and our temperatures they should be way spiked right now if we have no water flow or anything it's actually a good one because uh, just because you're not peeing, especially if your boat sat around for a little while, it doesn't mean there's a problem. It could just be clogged up. 
I'm sure there's all sorts of insects and everything else around this whole little area here because it's all tucked in that have made their way in there. So they'll have to check it during the service. All right, so this one's all good. We've got no problems with overheating. Been running for a while here. You can make it back over to the shop. So now we have about an hour and a half journey to Longbow Key. So I will see you there. Well, we finally made it down here. It's been about a hour and a half drive. We're here to look at a pursuit. It's actually got a windless and a VHF radio problem. So uh, let's get down to the boat. Well, here she is, the 428 Pursuit. What's it got floating over here? I'll be brothers. That's a cool boat too. Looks like a new one. Got twin 300s and must scoot just fine. But we're here for this guy. Our 428. Let me jump in, we'll get her opened up, and we gotta check out our windlass up there first. Alright, so I got her opened up. We use our remote up here, everything's on. Let's see what it does. Well, I can see the clutch is loose already. Let's tighten that up, and it looks like it's catching on something. It's weird, there's no collar or leash or anything on it. It's already off of it right there. All right, well, let's tighten the clutch first and then we'll see what happens. All right, we got our special tool here. Let's, there we go. Let's tighten down now, let's try it again. Looking underneath, looks like the chain's free. Forgot to. All right, so the clutch is tight. We got still some binding or whatever's happening. I totally forgot. I can't see it very well, but right back here, that little red lever. See how it's down? It's supposed to be up. That piece right there. That's actually a lockout. It locks the windlass out. So that's what's happening. That thing's that thing's activated right now. So let me turn that, and that should fix our problem. All right, so now that red lever is flipped, keeping our lock out of the way like it's supposed to. Now let's try it again. Well, look at that. It's working correctly. And our clutch is tight now because it was a little loose. Let's put our safety lock on there and check and see what's wrong with our VHF. Let's roll up to our dash here. It's covered right now, we don't worry about that. Here's our ICOM, because we probably can't get Garmin's, being this is a brand new boat. Should be able to hold this for power. Nothing, so let's uh, open this dash up and look behind it, make sure what we got, where the uh, control box is and everything for this. All right, so we are opened up, and here it looks like, here's our box for our VHF right here. That feeds our handle, so we should have power probably to uh, my guess would be yeah, right here, fuse holder. So we can follow the leader here. These are our VHF wires. Right here. That's our bottom fuse. And it's blown, look at that. I would wonder why it doesn't work. 3 amp, seems a little small. Let me go get a 5 amper and we'll uh, see if it works. All right, so we got our cover back on, our fuse is in. And she was already singing at me. So it probably is working. We don't need that. Clear. Clear. I know it doesn't work. Oh, we're already making noise. So good. VHF is fixed. And our windlass up there is working. Of course, they got to be weed eating in the background there. So good news. Everything is good here. I'm going to put the uh, console back, turn the batteries off, all that fun stuff. We got one more boat to head to. We got another probably hour drive back towards uh, home base. So, uh, We'll see you there. Well, we're here, our final stop. This uh, will end our day here. It's almost three o'clock already. This boat I'm just going to plug into because it's got twin 425s and the dock got hit by lightning. Now we're stuck in limp mode apparently, so let's get out to the dock there and uh, we'll plug in and we'll check it out. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, this customer has one of the longest docks to get to his boat also. It's like two football fields all the way. All the way there, he's got the boat down. I guess he's checking everything. Everything's running. So basically, the Yamahas. That's the biggest problem we have. 
limp mode everything works shifts steers you gotta be careful too it looks like we got storms here you know, let me jump on the boat we'll plug in and see what we got all right so we got the generator running we got both motors running let's go up to the dash so everything's working here we got key switches on binnacles working we got no data here on our yamaha gauge so we gotta look at the network power so let's get behind the dash so behind the dash here here is our yamaha network right here and we're gonna check power there we got good power there I already pulled the cowling so we can check our fuses that are on top of the motor right there. And if all that is good, we have power and ground everywhere, and there's something else going on. Knowing it got hit by lightning, who knows, it could have something crazy. Oh, what's happening here? Something going on with the uh, brown side of the batteries, who knows, but we're just here to see. You should be able to limp it back to the uh, boat ramp, which has got one over here, so we can pick them up at least, get it back to the marina. So. Let's check some voltage, make sure that's not what it is. All right, here's our Yamaha network. We've got charging voltage, so we're good there. So that was power to our network here, which supplies our information to the gauge back here, right here. Obviously everything works, our NEMAs are all connected, everything. Stereo is all functioning, so we got something else going on. Here's another network for the Yamaha right here. Everything seems to be plugged in good. Let's just go check the fuses on the motor first before we plug in and uh, see if there's any weird codes or anything. So on the very top is all of our mains here. So let's check and make sure that nothing is blown here. I doubt it, that being that everything works. These are all our big mains. Pardon the generator noise there. It's, she's running, got the air on, it's 100 degrees out. Nothing wrong with our mains. Let's check our little fuses here. Like I say, I don't think this is the problem. We got something else going on. We're gonna have to throw some parts at it here and see what, what happened. The lightning got something. I think we got, got no issues. Oh, what is this? There we go. I thought we had something. Nope. All right, all good. We got the last few here. I guess let's plug into it and scan it and see what it says here. All right, so we got our dongle plugged in here. It looks like, I don't know well you can see this in the camera when we see. We have a mobilizer, which is just a key switch, key fob. If you try to start it without it, it'll give you a code. There's only 121 hours on it. It's not showing any codes for anything wrong for communication. Well, I just put the cover back on, and unfortunately, nothing more I can do here. Check power to everything. Everything has got power where it should. Something has malfunctioned. I'm not sure what component it is, but... We've still got nothing on our network here. But lucky, there's a boat ramp right down the road here the customer can get to to uh, get it back to the shop. If I end up working on this one or I see what happened to it, I'll include it in one of the next videos here. I'm not sure what uh, what they're gonna find here, but it's nothing obvious. That being said, I hope you enjoyed our uh, journeys today. It's uh, 126 degrees outside here, so I'm gonna get packed up and call it a day. And as always, I appreciate everybody watching, and I will see you next time. Later. Your favorite bridge, Oscar.